Well, what's up is um, after that morning, I wonder if you recognize the opportunities and challenges that, that uh, are facing you at the moment. Um, 100% we're always um, open to and understand the, um, the ever-changing market that we, we live in and that we hope to impact. I think the reason we've been able to sustain, I don't want to say our position, but to continue to be in a position to have a voice in this market is because our focus is internal. Our focus is on ourselves. Our, fo our focus is on um, the one who's given us the vision and the people that believe in the vision. Our focus isn't on the perception of who we are. The focus is really focused on who we are. Um, and that starts with the intent of, of fear of God. Um, the intent is a transformational intent. It's not a transactional intent. And so um, we're hoping to provide product that transforms our consumer. We're hoping to um, build a brand that's sustainable in the sense that um, we'll always be around and that we're creating product that you hold on to and that you want to keep and not a product that you want to sell or flip or um, put on the market. And so um, everything that we do is a product of our values. Um, it's like a tree has fruit, you know, our house has, has product and that product represents, um, again, our values. And so our focus is on our values and our, our values luckily have been, um, honesty, being authentic, being transparent, being comfortable. I'm wearing sweats. <laughs> it's, um, how are you, you know? elegantly yourself at all times. You know, what is the line between sophistication and luxury and and being yourself? And how does the product allow you to do that? And so we were blessed, not blessed, but we were in a great position when everyone wanted to wear sweats and we're in London, so jumpers. <laughs> um, and, you know, we had reached a place where Essentials was strong enough, and um, the machine that is behind that um, was able to, um, I guess, suffice the market's demands. And um, yeah, we've been we've been doing doing all right. We're doing well. Uh, you've grown, you've grown, you've tripled in size in the last two years. So I think that's. In, the, in this in this environment, that is doing extremely well. Thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm that curious. Is true. You mentioned tra you mentioned <laughs> transformation. Um, when I when I when I see fear of God spaces in wherever I see them in stores wherever I am, they're always extremely busy. They're noticeably busier than other spaces in the in the same places. The, the notion of transformation is a fairly elevated one. Do you think that is what resonates with people then? That, that you're, you're offering, as you said, what you're wearing here is, is fairly quintessential to fear of God. How is that transformational then for people? Um, I think transformation is a process. When you, when you get into relationship with a person, spirituality with anyone with a product it's a it's a process of getting to knowing that that piece or that person or that product and i think for us we're 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 hoping to free our consumer up we're hoping to get our get our following and get our consumer in a place to understand that you can wear a proportion and a garment that is equally comfortable as, as it is elegant you don't have to be in a stiff suit to say that you're sophisticated. Um, and that comes with getting to know the product and it may not hit you in the face. And I hope it doesn't hit you in the face as soon as you see it. I like to be, you know, um, the quietest in the room. And I'm hoping that someone that wears fear of God enters the room and their, their uh, indiv individuality speaks before their clothing speaks. And so I don't want anything that we're creating to be too loud and to um, 
um, say too much, you know, when we first but, meet. But still <laughs> impact. But still impactful. But but still have an impact, and and hopefully they can sense the um, the love and consideration that we put into every piece from a pair of sweats with essentials to a, a mainline hoodie. It's, it should all feel as if it's coming from the same spirit. Now, the mainline is the luxury element. The th of the three pillars, mm -hmm. the mainline is luxury. You've, uh, you, you talk about luxury. Identify an American luxury. Uh, your brand is a representative of an American luxury. Uh, I'd like to know what you consider to be American luxury. I think American luxury is freedom. I think it's having the freedom to wear what you want when you want to wear it and having the freedom to put on something that frees you up mentally and spiritually so that you could be the best version of yourself. Um, and I think clothing has the power to do that. I think we all get up in the morning and, and make a decision on, on how we want to present ourselves and we want to present ourselves to be um, the most free possible so that we can have the light shine through us in the, the, the most direct and brightest way possible. And, and a lot of times clothing can kind of open up those doors inside. And if you're able to put something on that um, not allows you to just feel good about yourself, but allows you to be yourself, I think that's when you start to really experience a different level of, of freedom. Are there precedents that you can think of for, for the idea that you have of American luxury? Um, you did mention Calvin Klein to me at one point. Yeah. Um, I, don't see, I don't see there being precedents that speak directly to, I would say, maybe our core consumer. I think our core consumer is a little different than what Ralph or who Calvin may have been speaking to just 30 to 50 years ago when we look now and the, and the world is, is, is looking more and more um, like we're all related. <laughs> and so I think there's a, there's a little bit of a different point of view around today's America than maybe 50 years ago America. Uh, I guess. <laughs> Which means also ideas like freedom means something else. Um, freedom as a, as a point of activism 50 years ago, for example, is quite different from, from what it is now. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a goal, but, but the context has changed so much in, in that time. So I come back to the idea of transformation. What, what you're wearing there, for example, is the top is from the luxury, from the luxury pillar. Yeah, this is uh, Eternal that, that launches uh, next week. How do you, how could you use that piece to, uh, to exemplify the notion of luxury and transformation and re self-realization? What in that piece would say that, do you think? It's how I feel in the piece. Um, I think, you know, I could could go maybe grab a hoodie from Celine that proportion and could be a little tight on me and maybe not exactly feel exactly the way I want it to feel. I think I I feel free in it, um, and because I designed it, I would say I feel elegant in it too. <laughs> but I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to look at something physical and find the um, the spiritual, right? And I think it's a feeling. I think it's not a uh, it's not something that that you just kind of see hanging up. I think again, it's once you get to know it, you know, once you've you know worn it three or four times and it's shown itself that you know it is what it says it is that you begin to be in relationship with it. Do you think that your customers? respond in that way as well? Do you think they have this sort of, this kind of second sense about what it is that you're doing? Um, I think we're providing solutions for our customers. And so I think when they see a piece or they wear a piece, um, there's an immediate 
gratification of, oh, this solves the problem that I had in my closet. I think as you get to wear that piece more and more, again, it may so say something else to you. Um, uh, we kind of had this conversation last night at dinner. I think a lot of what we do is obvious. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to um, reinvent um, clothing from a design perspective. I'm trying to propose something that I feel hasn't been proposed um, through a lens that I feel like I haven't seen. Um, and it may just be two centimeters wider on the shoulder. You know, it may just be a little bit of a heavier fabric on a hoodie. And it, it could be the smallest of things. Um, I'm not. I'm not in design from a from a conceptual point of view as much as I'm um, in design from a from an intention and a storytelling person point of view. There's a there's a sort of a, there's a notion of connoisseurship, connoisseurship a little bit in 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 luxury that you 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 need a sort of understanding um, and that, I guess that's something else. There's a subtlety. You, you know, you talk about the, the, it's a few centimeters difference between what you're doing and somebody else is doing, but proportion is critical in fashion and often you're not really even aware of it. You can sense that something looks better than something else does. So this connoisseurship, um, you feel it's an important part of your relationship with your customers, that, that you're giving them credit to recognize what it is that you're attempting to do? In all honesty, I hope that um, because for them to to recognize the two centimeters or the difference in fabric is is really them having a full understanding of the ten thousand hours that we put into what we do. You know, that's the that's the magic and that's the the work of what we do is is finding that 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 proportion that um, is obvious to someone but is hard to figure out as well and not really understand why it feels as good as it does or why is it exactly what I've been missing when it appears to be very similar to something else that I own. And so, um, again, I think it's the feeling of when it's, when it's on. I don't, I don't know that, that they, and I could be wrong, but I, I, I don't assume that they, they really, really know the difference until they get to know the product. Well, I guess um, everybody has clothes that they put on and just it's just some subliminal thing. They just feel better in them. I mean, I know what I feel better in, um, and I'm definitely not a connoisseur, but I can sense when, when you feel good, you look good. It's a simple formula. But as, as, as Imran pointed out, you don't have any, didn't have any training in the fashion industry. So how did you come to this perception yourself? Um, I think a little bit like Ralph, I just kind of, kind of like um, in a good way like Ralph, where he's always kind of betting on himself. Is if, if, I, if I feel this way, like, you know, there, there must be others that feel this way. Um, in a bad way, like Adam Sandler and, and his uncut gems, it's like I'm perpetually betting on myself. And so I'm always betting on myself. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I worked retail, you know, all through undergrad and grad school. Um, and I've just had a knack for understanding both what people are looking for and how they want to feel and selfishly what I'm looking for and what's not there. Um, and what are those gaps and how do I fill those gaps? Um, and when I started the brand, I, I, I was really just creating pieces that were missing from the marketplace that I selfishly wanted. And I assumed that others felt the same way. I always wonder too how, how important your your family background was. Your father being so uh, significant in base the baseball world, and that's all about aspiration. Um, sports at that level is is all about the most aspirational thing it can possibly be, and feels to me that fear of God has always been motivated by that as well. Yeah, it's um it's an aspiration, and I think because I was able to grow up. Um, in that world, the aspiration is a tangible aspiration. 
it's not luxury in the sense, as we, we kind of heard earlier, that's, that's a fantasy. It's, it's a luxury in a sense that's attainable. It's luxury in a sense that you can see yourself in. Um, and so it's aspirational in that sense, but it's not, it's not a, a, a fantasy that um, is out of reach, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, especially when it's realized in product, I think, and you can actually see it and touch it and feel it. Uh, I'm, I, was, I was very intrigued when I, when I was reading about your plans for the future and for 2023, you're committing to atmosphere. And that's not a word you see very often when people are talking about their plans for the future. I mean, atmosphere as an aspirational word is very interesting. I wonder exactly what you mean by that. Yeah, we are um, in plans and um, we're, we're working on our first flagship. Um, we've had, um, which were pop-ups or temporary stores in the past, but we, we always call them atmospheres. We didn't call them pop-up stores or retail spaces. Um, our intention is that when you come into the environment, um, there's a shift that happens. Um, and we want to bring you beyond, bring you into a space that's beyond just an environment, but really fully the atmosphere and, and where everything is considered and where we have, you know, fear of God athletics and essentials in our main line all living to, together and in, in, in harmony <laughs> in a space that, um, um, is their home. I think for the past 10 years, we've been working tirelessly and building our, our brand. And I knew from the start that it was important for me to have an, uh, have an opinion and um, accessible aspiration through essentials. Um, I knew we needed to um, have an opinion in luxury to provide the aspiration that allows everything else to move. And I knew we needed to um, work with Xenia. I, I had a point of view on tailoring, but I wanted to work next to the best and to um, try and learn at the highest level to put that point of view um, through a new product. And now, you know, uh, with Adidas coming online in the first half of 23, um, you know, we worked hard to um, you know, have the ability to have an opinion within performance athletics. And now that we've given birth to all of these kids, we, we got to have a house um, um, where they all live and where they can grow um, and where they can kind of lean and learn from each other and where our audience can come in and understand the three different pillars that, that we have to offer and how they, how they live together. But atmosphere is also intangible. So yes, it, there's an intangible piece to the physical environment. Exactly. So when you walk into this, the new, the new um, flagship store, and you see the three pillars together, there's also something else that happens. Yeah, there's an some int magic. Yeah, there's an intangible thread that 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 kind of binds them together and also pulls you in as well. You've 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 gone through this 10 years in, in a slightly unconventional way, I feel, um, in that you haven't presented your clothing to the world in traditional ways, really. How are you planning to go forward with that in the next year? Um, well, part of that, we, we still continue to um, put out collections when they're ready. Unfortunately, that doesn't always... Um, line up with the fashion calendar, so to speak. Um, we've got a new collection, eighth collection, that's gonna be ready first part of um, 23. And this, for the first time, we have plans to uh, present that in a live way. Um, and 100%, that would be in Los Angeles, not in anywhere outside of, uh, outside of our backyard. And does that change the way you, can you feel that changing the way you look at what you do, that you're going to be doing this thing? You're going to do a live element that hasn't existed before? Um, I think 
our brand is evolving authentically with selfishly how my life is evolving. It's evolving with um, um, desires and, and, and visions that I have and as, as our pillars um, um, continue to grow independently, um, I still have um, a collective um, a collective thought that I that I would like to express, um, and this right now is the platform that I feel best to to share everything that we're that we're working on. Now, I've all, I've always said that fashion is autobi autobiography. Uh, how is yours? How, how does how you you just said that this this new development is selfish, but how does fear of God reflect you as you? As you get older, as you as your kids grow, um, I, I was very intrigued yesterday to hear to hear the talk about angry Gen Z, and um, and their relationship with fashion. How how does that feature in your in your thinking at all? That as you are not Gen Z yourself, um, do you feel that there's a way to talk to them that if they if they're not understanding fashion, but there is a way to talk to them. There is a way to, to. I think the way to talk make to them aspire. Yeah, I think the way to talk to anyone is um, through the solutions that you're providing them. Um, I think, you know, we started kids because I have I have three kids, and so through essentials we started a, a kids line. Um, we created a California EVA slip on. Um, that selfishly took the place of Crocs in my house because I didn't like the shape and the color and I could provide these beautiful tones of these easy slip-on shoes. So that was a selfish desire. But, you know, my, I have kids and so I'm designing into kids and um, I love the way a woman looks in men's clothing, which is why we've always, um, you know, used women, you know, in our campaigns in a, men, in a men's proportion. Um, but there are, ele there are other elements to that look that I haven't designed into yet, heels and handbags, and those are also coming to, coming to life next year uh, through our eighth collection, which we're excited about. And so as my wife steals my blazer, I also want to give her the footwear solution to <laughs> the entire look <laughs> um, instead of wearing something else with that. And now I have an idea of what, of what that is, and I think... Um, you know, as we've renovated our last office and as we're designing into our new atmospheric space, um, furniture and all of those elements become extremely more interesting than what they were before because now I'm, I'm making constant decisions around those things and I have an opinion there that um, is very similar to the opinion that lives throughout, throughout the rest of our products. Um, and so I think purpose and opinion are, are, can be very tied, very much tied together in the sense that they can live through any medium, you know, if the message is, is the same. And so, um, yeah, as I'm growing and developing and my family's growing and my needs are changing, uh, what we're designing into is changing as well. What do you see Fear of God looking like in another 10 years? That's a great question. Um, I know it's going to be bigger. Um, we we may have another retail space. I'm I'm really excited about the one that we're opening now. Um, the second space that I want to tap into is Mexico City. Um, Why? Um, I love Mexico City, but that's interesting. I, I think the people represent the spirit of the brand. It's tasteful it's elegant the food is good but the people are like super warm and nice and it's on the shame in an unashamed way it's their culture it's not westernized or it's not anything else it's unequivocally like who they are at the highest level of taste and warmth <laughs> and usually when you go to a beautiful city sometimes the people are cold and they're a little you know, I live in LA, so pretentious or whatever that may be, but Mexico City just feels like fear of God. 
um, from the architecture to the pyramids, the, you know, we talk about, you know, an eternal perspective, you know, a, a coat that transcends age that looks just as good on a high school kid as it does on a older gentleman or a point of view that's transcendent. Um, Mexico City has that spirit. So um, I see a space in Mexico City. Um, and I just see the brand like continuing to grow. I mean, what everything we're doing now is, I know we were talking about sustainability, but my sense of sustainability is just being able to be around for a while. And so, yes, I see us here for another 10 years. And um, I'm hoping that we continue to make product that's sustainable in the sense that you just want to buy into it once and, and hold on to it for a long time. Thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you, too.